All right, this is for our simple gear ratios, which is 1, 1, 3. Activity 1.1.3. Um, just to kind of give an idea of how we've gone through to check and see what our gear ratios are and how to fill in those first charts that are in our activity. So when we take a look at the activity, it asks us to label our gear train with our A, B, C, and D gears. Okay, so what we need to do is on your paper, on your notebook, you're going to draw out just your, your gears or you're going to write them down by A, B, C, D. So right now, I usually like to do both. We have a small gear, we have a smaller gear, we have a medium gear, and we have a large gear, at least for this one. In this case, this is going to be A, it's going to be B, C, and D. Okay, this is hard to see. Maybe there we go, for now. All right. Um, from here, we need to know how many teeth each of these has. So remember that is our N. So our N for A, our N for B, our N for C, our N for D. Okay, remember with VEX gears, we know how many teeth they all have. So our largest, so our D is going to be 84 teeth. Our next smallest is going to be 60. Our next smallest, which is A, is going to be 36. And our very smallest, which is our B, is 12. Okay, so we know the number of teeth we have already, and that's all we really need for that first chart. It's just asking how many teeth do you have for each of these gears that you're using for your simple gear train. Okay, so remember your simple gear train is just gears in one row, all connected to each other, so that when you turn, all four of them turn. Okay? The next section is asking you to find your gear ratios. So for your gear ratios, what we'll need to do is we need to do our gear ratio for, if, it, if you see how it asks, it says B to A, it says C to B, and then D to C. Okay, so whenever we do our gear ratios, the equation that we're using is N out divided by N in especially if we have our teeth, which usually we do if we're doing VEX. So that's why it's saying B over A, C over B, D over C, because we're acting as if we're putting in our effort in A, so we're putting in the input, turning, so we're going to turn this first one, and it's going to turn all the rest. So if you put effort in here, it'll come out to this one, okay? So that's that little system. Okay, separate then this middle one is going to be putting, our B is going to be putting in our input into C, which would be our out, which is why we have C over B here. Okay, and then our lastly, we have then our C here would be putting our in, and then our D would be our out. Okay, which is why, we, again, we have out over in, so our D over C. Okay, so what we can do is we can take the numbers we already had and just plug them in. So for out over in, we have our B over our A, so we have 12 over 36. Our C over our B, so 60 over 12. And then our D over our C, our 84 divided by 60. So obviously or not, um, your gears should be different than mine. Um, so if they are different, which again they should be, um, you'll use the values that you have for your gears specifically. Okay, then we're going to ask you to do is simplify these, put these into decimals. Okay, so if we say 12 divided by 36, we're going to get 0 0.33 repeating, so that's a third, one third. Okay, if we have 60 divided by 12, oops, that is my bad. 60 divided by 12, we're going to get 5. And then if we do 84 divided by our 60, we're going to get 1.4. Okay, what it asks you to do then for that second chart, you're filling out, you're saying we have this simplified, this simplified, this simplified. What we want to do, if you want to find the gear ratio of an entire simple um, gear train like this, you need to multiply the gear ratios of whatever gears you have in the system. Okay, since we have all four of these together, 
We have to multiply the gear ratio of these two times the gear ratio of these two times the gear ratio of these two, which will give us the entire thing. All right, so we'll say 0 0.33 times 5 times 1.4. Okay, so that will give us our overall simplified value. So we have 0 0.33. We have times 5 times 1.4. Alright, that's going to give us about 2.31. Alright, that's our product. And then our actual gear ratio would be our 2.31 to 1. Alright, so that's how we find these gear ratios. Alright. What we want to do from there is we want to take a look at our simple gear train. It has conclusions. So what it's asking you to do, it asks how many times does gear A rotate compared to gear D. So if we take a look at our gear ratio, so gear A in this one is going to rotate 2.31 times for every single time gear D rotates. Okay, so this one, this little one here, will rotate two and some times before the last one rotates once. Okay, that's what it's telling you. And so that's close to what it's asking you. Take a look at that. Um, when it starts asking you about, let's see, our 10 foot-pounds of torque um, or a certain number of foot-pounds of torque applied at gear A and it asks you for the output at D, what it's asking you to do is use the gear ratio formulas that we had before. So we knew um, that our n, we have n out over n in, we know that. Um, from the other formulas we had before, we know that torque, it's also torque out over torque in. So what we're going to do is we're going to wind up cross multiplying to solve for x. Okay, so we have n out over n in equals our torque out over our torque in. Alright, so we know it's asking for a to d. Right? So, our D is going to be out, our A is going to be in, so we know that this will be our D divided by our A. We know that this, um, we actually don't know our torque out, so we leave that. Or if you'd like to, you could put X, if that helps you, because you'll solve for this one. Now our torque in was 10 foot-pounds. Okay? So now what you want to do is you want to solve for your unknown, so your torque out. So if, you're, if you've done cross multiplying or may have been a long time, I know a lot of you guys were saying it's been a while, um, what you're going to do is you're going to cross, you know, multiply the numerator from one side by your denominator of the other, and the numerator of this side, the other side by the denominator of the other. And then you put those on the opposite sides of your equal sign. So we'll say 84 times 10 foot-pounds, okay, is equal to 36 times our torque out, which is what we're trying to find out. Okay, so when we do this, we want to simplify the side that we have. Um, so 800, or 84 times 10, it's going to be 840. This is still foot-pounds. It hasn't gone anywhere. Okay, and we have it equals to 36 times torque out. So remember to get torque by itself, you want to divide, well since 36 is multiplied by torque, you want to divide your 36 on both sides so you can cancel it out on this side and that way you don't lose it from your equation. So we say divided by 36, so this one would cancel and we have to divide by 36 on this side. So when we do that math, we're going to say 840, again divided by 36, so it would equal to 23.33, a third repeating, is our torque out. Okay, so that's how you solve it. No matter what your numbers are, maybe you had, your last one was a 60 gear, maybe your first one was a 12, whatever it is, you plug in those numbers that you have, you plug in your 10 foot-pounds was your torque in, and then you're solving for your torque out. Okay, if you have questions on this, please let me know. Um, but you should be able to take these same exact steps just with whatever values you have for your system.